Toryism by George Saintsbury from A Scrapbook, first published in 1922. There lies open before me, with inside end paper and flyleaf exposed, a small volume inscribed as follows, in a very comely hand, names only blanked. Two, blank. One of two Tories left in England. From the other, blank. January, 1892. The other is, alas, dead, and the one, whose hand is not comely, probably has not long to live, so that, unless some recruits have sprung up in the last thirty years, Toryism would seem, on the authority of this document, to be in a rather bad way. If I remember rightly, Victor Hugo, in his Victorian manner, announced once, Je serai soli la In the case of its coming to a definitely last man of another, quite other, sort of political creed, and seemed rather to enjoy the prospect. I'm afraid I should not possess megalophigia of that kind, to that extent, if I were the case above suggested. For it would not only be a great pity, from various minor points of view, but would show rather uncomfortably that the human brain is returning rapidly to that ape stage, in which some of us still don't believe, Everything that I've ever seen or read about monkeys inclines me to believe that there is pretty complete democracy among them. Toryism, however contrary this may go to radical chatter about it, is at least a political creed which can stand the test of rational examination of the physical and historical facts of life. It rests, in the first place, on the recognition of the facts that all men and women are born unequal, that no men or women are born free. If one could play the hackneyed time reversal game, it would be cruelly amusing to watch a future Democrat at his birth, leave him entirely free from all interference, and see what happened to him. And that if you leave two healthy brothers or sisters alone together, they will frequently, if not continually, fight. In the second, being well acquainted with history, it knows that all attempts to establish liberty, equality, and fraternity have failed more or less disastrously and disgustingly, whatever camouflage of success they may have kept up, while acceptance and judicious regulation of the contraries have always, barring the faults of individuals or more rarely of systems, done well. For the sentimental pleas of socialist democracy, it has the answer of religious charity. For the arithmetical plausibility of share and share alike, it has the irresistible replies in kind that the alikeness will not last a year, a month, a week, a day, nay, not an hour, and that in a very short time there will be nothing to share afresh. Why should there be kings? Because there always are kings, whether by divine right, as in some cases, or by diabolic selection, as in others. Why should there be peers? Because you want, in all, or nearly all, cases, some court of political appeal. And, when your first line of government is elective, there should clearly be a second with which direct popular election has as little to do as possible. Now, the hereditary principle supplies this, as it also does in the case of kingship, better, by all experience, than anything else. Behind all this, and any amount more which anybody can have who wants it, there is the vague-seeming but rationally impregnable background argument provided once more by age-long experience, that change is rarely for the better, and that continual change, for the sake of changing, will certainly sometimes and probably often be for the worse. The goods you have are real, and the ills, in all probability and experience, to a large extent imaginary, 
certainly bearable in that they have been born. The goods that are to come may, and by experience to a large extent will, be imaginary, and the ills very real indeed. Nothing has been said here, purposefully nothing, of the non-practical side of Toryism, which is, of course, giving away masses of weight. Some of the more generous iconoclasts themselves admit the beauty of the icons they would destroy. For my part, their own ideals seem to me more hideously ugly and uninteresting the more they elaborate them. Put away all thought of the crime and agony which would have to be gone through in order to bring about the socialist utopia. Get it somehow brought about by fairy agency. Could there, even then, be anything more loathsome than one wide waste of proletariat comfort? Everybody as good as the president? Everybody as well-educated as everybody else? Everybody stationed, rationed, regulated by some kind of abstract state as equal and really about as free as pigs in a sty, and not much better deserving the name of man or the manly chances of position, possession, genius, ancestry, and all that differentiates us from brutes? If anyone says, but you have no business to assume that there is no via media between this and Toryism, history and not I shall answer him. Whiggery, liberalism, moderate radicalism, all have failed, more or less. The only reason why in this or that case they have not failed utterly, or have held out for a long time, being that they have not been extreme, that the remnant of the principle of Toryism itself, inequality, individualism, heredity, property, etc., which they have retained, has kept them alive.